Hey, everybody, welcome to Ron Line Report. This man is doing very, very well in 2021, and the season isn't over yet. He's got nope. two pro wins so far. A couple more shows coming up. The Arnold Classic Olympia. Please welcome from Canada or Florida. I'm not sure where he is right now. He'll tell me. Stephen <laughs> Valier. How are you? Hey, Ron. Thanks for having me. I'm in, I'm in Florida right now, so we're we're still down in, uh, in, in training camp for the Arnold and Olympia. So. But, yeah, two, two down, two to go, right? Yeah. So, yeah, let me, let me figure out this quarantine. I, I, I feel terrible for you guys who have to go to all these other countries and everything, but did you go somewhere else before Canada to the U S or you were able to go straight? No, to the Canadians, US? we can, we can, we don't have to quarantine coming this way or anything like that. Um, you just have to get a, a negative test in Canada before we flew here. Uh, and then the same thing returning home. And if you're not double vaccinated, then yes, you need to do your two week quarantine when you return to Canada. Okay. So are, are all the Bumsteads and Valliers in Florida right now? Uh, yeah, me, Chris, Courtney, and, uh, and Melissa. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Courtney's not a Bumstead yet. Yeah. No. <laughs> it, could, it could happen. Yeah. Um, I, right before we started recording, you let me know you've been with Raw Nutrition for six months. I'm a doofus, man. I don't know how. I, I just started noticing your posts with, with the products like in the last few weeks. But you've yeah, yeah. been with Raw. Wow. Okay. Yeah, no, I've been with Raw and Revive for... I can't remember the exact date, but we're talking like probably like April or May or something. But I mean, it's been a few months for sure. So, okay. um, and then I'm sure everyone saw that, you know, Chris announced that he has an ownership position position there as well. So, you know, obviously me knowing that, you know, having the inside access, knowing that months ago was obviously a big selling point with me coming over here as well. So, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's exciting to have, you know, the whole family together and, you know, a lot of things we can work on together. So it's uh, a lot of exciting things in the pipeline. So it's, it's fun. Yeah. It's cool that you're all working with the same companies and everything too. That's, consolidates everything you know in a way um, yeah i mean you know obviously there was a whole, whole bunch of different things here i mean you know it's even before chris you know the company matt jansen was a, is a part owner there someone i know and i trust and you know i have a good rapport and good relationship with so that was a a big thing for me and you know the products that i i really like and enjoy and you know especially with the revive line um you know with the health supplementation being a huge thing you know for us you know especially for the pro body loads how much we save and, and you know how many things i can incorporate into my daily regime there so yeah. um yeah just so many things that were you know really good drawing points for me uh to come over and you know it's just a, a new chapter and we're all together now so it's it's a lot of fun for sure all right let's talk about ian valier people get mad when i start talking about the other family members and <laughs> sorry everybody sorry we're going back to ian now so the last time we spoke last time we actually spoke was right backstage after you won the tampa pro yeah um, you know this came up the next week with with because we have so many people watching these shows on the live streams now and you can't really get a good sense of what the condition is like on any of you guys from these live streams. You can't. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause I remember watching, I was watching the stream of Texas and every once in a while I had to wait until our photos were uploaded, the, the high res photos. Cause I thought, Oh, nobody's really in that great of shape. Nobody. And then I look at the pictures and I'm like, Oh my God, they're freaking, they look unreal shredded. What a, yeah. Cause you were getting flack after the Tampa win from some people, mostly the, who'd they want to win? Phil, right? With the Phil second. Yeah, I mean, year? look, I mean, for, for any of the shows, you know, you can make an argument for any of those guys that are in the top two, three winning the show. I mean, like, you know, in Texas, I mean, you know, Kuklo was really good. Um, you know, he's big. He's got really nice, pretty structure. Um, you know, he's got some, some really wow factor, you know, and, and uh, Phil Claire was in really good shape. Uh, he's really good, got really good back. I mean, you know, and same thing going into to, to Tampa the week before. So, Look, I mean, there's things, if you want to pick apart every single thing, you can make a case in some level for someone winning a show. And I mean, that's going to happen to every show ever. Oh, yeah. You know, I think where it comes down to is one, yeah, obviously, like you said, you know, seeing photos or seeing a bit on, you know, a, a low grade live stream doesn't tell the whole story. Um, and I think anyone that was there in person for either of those shows saw that I was in ridiculous condition, especially in Tampa, in Texas. Texas. Um, I mean, I, I would not to like toot my own horn, but I would say, in Texas, I was probably the best, per, you know, best conditioned person to step on any stage so far this year in 2021. So, um, you know, and I, I think we'll be even better going forward. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it is what it is, you know, there's going to be people that are going to have their opinions and, you know, obviously I was, you know, someone that succumbed to that last year in, in uh, New York pro when I won there, but you know, it's, it's subjective show. And, you know, it, when you're not there in person, when sitting five feet away, like the judges are, you know, people are going to have a difference of opinions and that's okay with me. I expect people to support the athletes that they like. And if they're a fan of Steve or Phil um, more than they are of me, you know, I hope that they, you know, cheer on Steve or Phil and say that they should have won. So, um, you know, it's no harm, no foul. I mean, at the end of the day, I walked around away with those wins, not them. Um, 
you know, and I expect to do the exact same thing going into the Arnold, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny because we were doing the stream and they were, we were doing it live on YouTube. Like I think you do, you and, you and Fuad and the guys do that sometimes with shows. And the yep. comments are coming from all the people who are watching the stream and listening to our commentary. And um, all the, the Ian Valier fans, they said, Ian's the clear winner. All you other guys are on crack. <laughs> Phil, the Kuklo fans were exa- same, same exact way. Like, of course. Steve's got this by a mile. You guys don't know what you're looking at. And then this, you know, Phil Clayar is getting some fans too now. And they were all, yeah. it was three groups of people who were all convinced that their guy was the clear winner. The other guys didn't stand a chance. And it was, man, that was one of the best top threes I've seen. I, now I really wish I once after that stream, I was like, man, I should have gone to that. I had an yeah, opportunity. You, I should have gone. You, you uh, missed out, man. I mean, even from the energy there, like, I mean, I've, I've been to the Olympia twice. I've done, you know, some of the biggest lineups with the New York pros and the Vancouver pros and Toronto pros and, you know, all these and, and had big crowds with, you know, crazy supportive fans. But that Texas show was hands down the most energy and best crowd and best, you know, stage environment I've ever competed in. I mean, like it felt like it was like Phil Heath, Kai Green 2015, like showdown, you know, like people were going wild and screaming, yelling. There was pyrotechnics going off behind us. I mean, you know, it was just a really fun show. And those guys, um, you know, Freddie and them run a really, really good show. And, you know, it was a ton of fun and the crowd was awesome. And, you know, even though the show was in Texas, you know, it wasn't like a one-sided fan base for Steve. Like, you know, people were there just to support athletes and they just wanted to see a good, fun, exciting show. And it was, it was, it was a ton of fun, man. I mean, uh, you know, it was hats off to the guys that put on that show and they did a really good job. And, you know, hats off to the judges because that, that had to be one of the toughest, toughest shows of this year or any year to judge. I would not have, I would just been at a loss to, to what to do. Well, I mean, and they, they, they worked as hard. Like, I mean, in pre judging in the morning, I think if you watch the the comparison, just of the three of us, it's like seven minutes, you know, Jeez. like, I mean, seven minutes of us just straight. Like, I think it was like me in the middle for three. And then they had Steve in the middle for three. And then like, you know, Phil hair got in the middle. So like, they kind of gave us all a minute in the, in the, in the spotlight. Right. And then at same thing at finals, they worked us again and, um, they completely rejudged both of them. I mean, after fi- pre-judging, I was only ahead by one point. So I didn't, it was me. And then Steve was one point behind me. And then Phil Clare was a couple points behind. Um, and then at night I had a perfect score and Phil and Steve actually split points. So I did come back. I'm generally a bit better at night. Usually um, that's just historically how I always am a little more time, a little more food, you know, that kind of thing. Got, you know, get the kinks out in the morning. Um, so I came back better and kind of closed the door at night. But I mean, yeah, it was, it was a really, really crazy fun show, man. Yeah. So the, you know, people were trying to scratch their heads, you know, why, because you, you and you and Kukla were so close. If I had to try to explain to somebody, why did, why did Ian beat him? I, I, I said, I think he just nailed the condition was just that, that insane that, yeah. you know, cause you're both huge guys. You both have certain strong pose. It was, it was a very evenly matched. Yeah, I mean, you know, feels no for sure. Time. I mean, you know, we have a lot of similar strengths and weaknesses, you know, like, from a structural standpoint, we're both taller, bigger guys. Steve's obviously a little bigger than I am, you know, but then my conditioning, I think was just, you know, in such a different level at that show. I mean, and look, people will say that Phil Hair was in the best shape or blah, blah, blah. But what you have to look at is you have to look at uniform uniformity in conditioning. It's not just being in the best condition. If like your quads or your upper back, or, you know, this thing is in the best condition, or if, you know, like a lot of people say this was Max Charles, but like he's in the best condition because he's got those crazy sliced abs all the time and a super strided chest. But it's like, okay, turn him around and let's look at it from there. But, you know, I think that's where I really separated myself is my conditioning was extremely even and extremely good and polished from every single shot. You know, my glutes were, you know, you couldn't pinch a quarter of a millimeter of skin. My hamstrings were sliced you know, all through my back, my quads, you know where Steve was in really, really good shape, but you could see in his lower glutes, there was a little bit of there. His hamstrings weren't quite dug out as mine. And Phil Clahair being, even though he was in really good condition, you know, he is a little weaker through the hamstrings and adductors. Um, and, you know, there's some small things where, look, like I said, you can make a case for all of these guys because I have weak points too. But when it came down to, okay, they're all pretty even from a muscularity standpoint, you know, like Phil's got some good parts, Ian's got some good parts, you know, Steve does. Then it really came down to muscularity and conditioning, which, I was on par with everyone, if not better in muscularity and a lot of shots. And then I was by far in the best condition, in my opinion. So, um, you know, it it really came down to that. But I mean, like I said, it it was a very, very, very close show. I won't be I'll be the first one to admit that. I mean, you know, if I'd been two percent worse in the prejudging or one percent worse at finals, I mean, you know, it could have gone a completely different way. So, you know, 
luckily Patrick and I are not luckily. I mean, you know, thankfully Patrick and I were able to, you know, nail it that show. And, uh, that was a huge, obviously a huge win for me, you know, momentum wise and career wise, you know, being a guy like Steve Kuklo was huge. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's just, uh, that was, I mean, out of all the, all the shows I've been in and my four pro wins now, that was definitely the biggest and most rewarding by a, a large, large mile, you know? Wow. Yeah. I thought New York, cause New York pro is such a prestigious title, but yeah, New York pro is a yeah. prestigious title, but there was more Steve Kukla for God's sake. <laughs> yeah. There was more doubt in that show. Like, you know, and I think I looked, I know I look a lot, a lot better. So I think, um, you know, the, the combination of me knowing I was at like my all time best at Texas, like that was better than the Olympia last year. That was better than Tampa this year. That was like the best Ian by far. Yeah. Um, and then putting that package together, like right when it mattered to beat a guy, the caliber of Steve was just like one of those things of like, wow, like it all lined up here. We did it when it mattered the most on a, you know, against a, you know, top six kind of guy. Um, and that's, you know, it was a huge thing for me. Right. Yeah. So I'm curious about the week between Tampa and Texas, because you, you did, you tightened up a lot more in that one week. Mm -hmm. Did you go crazy extreme with cardio, low carbs, or, or was it just another week of dieting? Uh, no, we, we pushed it down. Like the first couple days after Tampa, um, you know, obviously, you know, there's a little bit of residual water and you, you know, you, the glycogen comes back in full force. So you've got to keep things low. Um, you know, so we really pushed it low the first, like probably till like Tuesday or Wednesday. And my weight came down quite a bit. Like I came down like eight, nine pounds. Wow. Um, and I, I'll be honest, I looked really bad, <laughs> you know, <laughs> when I was looking at myself after Tampa and I was like really flat. Um, and kind of strung out looking cause we pushed it low to like, make sure we were really crisp until we put some food back in on like Wednesday, Thursday. Um, the look was pretty bad. Like I was looking at myself. I'm like, yo, Kuko is going to fucking run train on me here. You know, like this is going to be an embarrassment. Like this is wow. bad. Wow. You know, I'm going to ruin all this, this hype and, and energy I got going after Tampa. But you know, as we got some food in and you know, life started to come back to my physique, um, you know, that extra bit of detail and conditioning, we kind of etched in over that week, you know, and dried out a little more. Um, it really started to show as, as we got popped back to it. So um, it was one of those things where it was like one day sooner, one day later, it might not have lined up so nice. And it was just like hmm. perfect timing right into that show. It, it worked out phenomenally, really. Yeah. I'm curious, do you still drink water? Night before day of, or are you back to doing what everyone else does and dehydrate? No, I, dr I drink water right through shows, like wow. as if it's a normal, normal day at the office. Like even through Tampa uh, and Texas, I'd never, yeah, Texas, I never stopped or slowed down drinking water. The only time I did was after prejudging um, in te Texas when we knew we wanted to just come in a little, little crisper for finals. Yeah. And we saw that I had a decent level of fullness. Uh, we got a couple small meals and we didn't cut the water by any means we just limited it to like a liter for that like five six hours we had so i still had i still had a liter of water like i, I rehydrate because obviously we uh we sweat and you know had a good amount of posing in that pre-judging so we just want to make sure we replace that um with a little bit extra uh and then just you know had some and the, the amount of food i ate between it was very very small meals like i was eating you know 150 grams of rice with like 100 grams of meat like really really small meals um, you know, just to keep really dry and just to get a little bit of that, you know, glycogen and stuff back that I burned in that pre-judging, but we wanted to keep, you know, progressing in terms of the dryness and conditioning, especially because we pushed out so much that morning, uh, with that hard posing, we were like, Hey, this is a good advantage to, you know, a good time to take advantage of, you know, we've really pushed things hard and drawn everything into the muscle. Let's kind of just keep it there. Um, and try and come in a little crisper for the finals. Right. Hey, you only had about, I think it was about a four hour gap between, uh, judging and finals. It wasn't long. Yeah, it was like four or five hours, but I mean, it made a big difference for me. Like, you know, I was able to get a good nap in, get like two or three little tiny meals in, have a bit of water. And I, I woke up after that nap and I looked 10, 15% better. I was like, well, this is good. So, yeah. you know, it was, it was, like I said, it was one of those things of just like the timing and everything we just nailed, right? Like it was, we could, we, I know I couldn't have looked any better with what I had at my disposal at that time. So, um, you know, it was, it was one of those things, those moments like the Olympia 20, uh, 20, you know, where I look back at it, I'm like, you know, maybe I didn't come first, but I know that I could not have done any better, you know, like in terms of my physique, like sure. The judges could have judged me six instead of a team, whatever, blah, 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 irrelevant. It's neither here nor there. Yeah. Um, you know, but what I brought in terms of my physique, I knew was the, the utmost of my capabilities at that time. So there's no feeling of like, oh, I should have done this or we could have done this. It was like, 
I can sleep tonight. I did everything and I'm very happy with how I look at the end, you know? Yeah. And I mean, you, you seems like you and Patrick, this is a third or fourth show together now, I, I think. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it seems like uh, you guys have got a really good handle yes, on, yes. on what to do. Yeah. I think after it was, it was trial by fire. Cause I mean, we went into that Tampa pro um, against Hunter and we completely fucked it up. And then we, you know, learned very quickly you know, in terms of what not to do in terms of my water manipulation and cutting water and stuff. Yeah. So we just did no water cut whatsoever and no diuretics or anything at all going into New York where I was, you know, won that show there. And then now we've done things kind of from both ends, you know, from aggressive water cut to none. And then we kind of found the happy middle and then progressed that into the Olympia. And then what we learned at the Olympia, we, you know, used into Tampa. And now I think every show we're learning like a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Um, but I think that final week process we have down to like a very, very, it's a very simple science for us. Like it's not, we're not doing anything crazy. We start just, you know, adding in a little food on like Wednesday. It's a slow progressive carb up. I'm not doing any like thousand gram carb days. I mean, we're talking like four or 500 grams of carbs a day over four or five days, you know, just let things build slowly, keep the water in normal. We use almost no diuretics and we just kind of like coast right through salt in all the way. Um, we just act as if it's like another day. I mean, if I look really, really good at a week out, like, you know, we just add in a little bit more food because I'm obviously at some little bit of a deficit trying to get the conditioning down. So we just kind of fill that deficit and then we just walk on stage. And that's really it for us. Yeah. I'm, I'm intentionally bringing up this water thing over and over again, because we've had, oh, this, I understand. Yeah, we've yeah. had this whole situation with, unfortunately, it's mostly women that seem to be having the worst, uh, the worst things happen to them from diuretics and everything, but yeah, I, 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 I'm intentionally having you bringing up that you drink water and you don't go extreme with diuretics and all that, because I think there is that universal belief that you have to do that on contest day. You have, I, mean, to I, totally I know for a fact that some of the, some of the guys that I've competed with, with the absolute best. Oh. Uh, somebody trying to call you. Yeah. <laughs> You're back. Uh, I know some of the guys I've competed with, you know, with the absolute best freakiest driest conditioning are the guys that use no diuretics. Like I know when I used to compete and Josh Wade used to compete. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I, I know Josh Wade with working with Meadows never used diuretics ever. Wow. Um, so, you know, I know that there's, you know, a lot of guys that it, it really comes down to, if you can get in crazy shape, why do you need to do that? You know, like if you're dry and your body fat's low, there's not going to be much water there. I mean, you know, 99.9% .9 of people can get away with like, a quarter diazide or even just lowering their water a tiny bit the day before, not cutting it, lowering it, um, you know, or using even some kind of natural diuretic, you know, like it, there's so many things that all could be solved by just being in better shape. You know, like people, I think, think sometimes that diuretics are fat burners and they're not, <laughs> um, you know, yeah, so you get people that if you get to the point where you need to use you know, five tabs of diazide and bunch of aldactone and add loop diuretics in there. Well, all you did is fuck up the 12 weeks prior. It wasn't something that you needed to do. So, um, you know, just contemplate that going forward in terms of your whole prep process. It's like, okay, you know, when you're a week out, look at yourself and you're like, could I step on stage tomorrow and be happy with how I look, you know, from a conditioning standpoint, you might be a little flat or whatever, but right. from a conditioning standpoint, could I step on stage tomorrow and be content? And if the answer is no, well then, Next time you prep, you need to be in better shape in a week out. And it's as simple as that, you know? Yeah. I mean, any of you guys who follow Patrick Tours, P-T-U-O-R on Instagram. Yeah. He puts, he puts up picture videos. He put up a video a few days ago of just your butt. Yeah. <laughs> the glutes just to show people this is how he's like walking around right now. It's not contest day. He's not all deplete. He didn't have to do anything crazy. He got, he has all the body fat. And that's the thing yeah. is you, you get lean, you get whatever the percent is, doesn't matter. You get so lean and dry with the body fat just gone that that's the look that people think you have to do crazy things at the last minute to get, but you're not going to get that look at the last minute. No. Well, and I also know that for 99.9% .9 of people using more than a very, very minimal amount of diuretic is going to make you look worse. Yeah. You know, I mean, like when you're flushing all that kind of water out, it's coming out of the muscle too. It's coming out all these things you know, you generally are going to lose a lot of pop, a lot of fullness, and you're going to get oh, such a small degree drier that it's usually making your look worse. I mean, case in point, my Tampa 2019 or 2020, um, you know, at that show there, like it was, you know, the only thing that was done wrong there was a quarter tab, too much diazide and cutting out two, uh, you know, a couple of uh, liters, too much water. I mean, that was it. You know, I should have kept my water in and, you know, used a quarter tab less of diazide. 
And we did that. We went to no Dyeside and no uh, water cut for New York. And I want a show two weeks later. So um, nothing else changed in my physique in those two weeks. Other than that, I was hydrated. I was full. My body fat was low enough that it wasn't, it wasn't making me look more conditioned by flushing out a little bit of water is making me look, you know, more conditioned by being fuller, you know? So, um, you know, that's all it is. People just need to really reassess the the whole time and where their body fat is at going into that last week and stop relying on diuretics. You know, it's, that's like a thing. It's like, just take out the, like, you know, you've done a carb load. Okay. You've held a tiny, tiny little bit of water from eating a bit of carbs, clean out that little tiny bit of water. And that's it. It's not, it's not like a, a fail safe, like let's flush out 15 pounds of water, you know, then try and look good when we look bad. It doesn't work like that. And people, people, I think are starting to realize that, especially when there's been some horror stories happening and, you know, we're doing interviews like this and I went on, on some other channels we've talked about on food ads and stuff. And uh, I think people are starting to realize that it's not necessary whatsoever. Um, and I just hope it continues to go that way. You know, you you know, another thing is when you, when you do these extreme diuretic protocols at the end, like some people do, that's when you have people saying, well, I can't do another show. I can't peak again next yep. week or two weeks later. And it's not because it's for no other reason that they did so much damage to their bodies with the diuretics. that it's going to take a few weeks just to recover from that. Whereas, well, yeah, not- I mean, you go, you go pop tooth, even, even, you know, not some of the insane, insane protocols we're talking about, even just a guy using, you know, one or two dyes, and maybe a Lasix or something, which is very, uh, is way too much in my opinion. But hmm. if you do that and then you have, you know, reintroduce the water, have a big meal after the show, maybe breakfast the next day, you know, it could take you a week or so to get that water back off that you've accumulated. So, you know, the less diuretics you have, the more water you keep in, the more your body's going to be, you know, used to continuing to flush that water. And it makes like when I, with the protocols I do, I wake up the next day and I look the exact same. Even if I went out the night before and ate 10,000 grams of garbage food, I'm not like blown up, swollen, blah, 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 like diuretic rebound. I look just full, you know, like full and veiny and maybe lost some separation because I'm so sodiumed up, but I, you don't get that hand tightness diuretic, like, you know, um, and I, and that'll clear in a day, you know, so it, it makes it a lot easier and why I enjoy doing the shows, you know, multiple shows, because I feel confident that I know I can nail that look time after time. Right. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's the thing. Very few people can do that. Nail that, that peak several times in a year. Cause let's see. So Tampa was end of August. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is that right? No. No, that was Texas. End of July. End of July. And then Texas was a couple was uh, one week later. So you're I don't holding, even remember. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't matter. You're holding contest condition basically for let's see end of July to uh beginning of October. You know, how do you mentally, physically, how do you stay that lean for that long without you know losing it, without losing some muscle, without losing your mind? Yeah, I mean it's it, obviously it's a balancing act, right? I mean, you need to come up a little bit, what we really did is we just wanted to bring up the food a little till we found the point where that my training performance was back to hundred mm-hmm. percent. So we knew once I could get back to moving the super duper heavy weights that I'm known to move, yeah. then we're not going to be compromising tissue. So as long as I got enough food in me so that my training was back to, you know, 120%, the, the look was secondary to that at this point, you know, obviously we want to maintain as low body fat as possible, but we really just wanted to make sure that we were getting training back to full bore. So we kind of slowly increased food until we found that my training was felt a hundred percent. My strength was back to where we know it should be. Um, and luckily for me, where I got to that, my conditioning still was basically at stage ready. So, um, you know, I've been able to maintain like a two day outlook, three day outlook, um, you know, and my strength is back to, you know, deadlifting seven plates for reps and, and all these things. So, um, you know, it's, it's been honestly pretty easy. I mean, you know, cause the work, the hard work was done mostly going into the first two shows, you know, now my cardio has been minimal. I have more opportunity to, you know, have some higher days with carbs because the body fat is low and the training is high. So, you know, we're not trying to like push down food to get body fat off at this point. We're really just trying to, you know, mitigate, you know, any fat gain and and maximize training. Right. Yeah. So we found that kind of balance. And then once we got within, you know, two, three weeks out, we're like, okay, it's time to, you know, push it back down in. And then we've been doing that. So, Um, it's, it's been really, really easy. And, you know, for me, I find I actually function a lot better in a prep state. You know, when you're not eating 1200 grams of carbs a day and like suck drugged down by so much, like, you know, so much serotonin release from all these carbs, you feel a lot better, you know? So for me, from a functioning standpoint, I, I like being in this state because I feel much more productive. My brain fog is a lot less. I'm not napping all day. Um, you know, so it's, it's been a very productive time. And I mean, even you've seen, I've been 
you know, getting the YouTube going and like a lot of productive things that, you know, when you're dead in prep or, you know, eating so much food in the off season seem like a huge hard task for me. I'm like, okay, I'm excited. I'm, you know, and I'm not slugged down to want to do these things. Right. Yeah. So we're, as we speak, I'm not sure when we're going to post this, but we're talking about 10 days out from the Arnold right now, 10 or yep. 11 days. Yeah, 11, did, yeah. What was the, uh, if the Arnold had been normal time this year, March, would you have wanted to do it then? Or no, was it, was it a lot more enticing because it's so close to Olympia? Yeah, the, the only thing that drew me to it was was its timing. Um, you know, if, if it had been in March, it would have been not even a thought in my mind, um, and which is why it hasn't been in previous years, honestly. It's just, you know, I like to be one of those guys that is doing those shows. I like doing the regular shows in, in May, June, you know. I, I have always aimed to do Toronto Pro if it happens, and that's usually the first week of June. Um, you know, it makes it breaks up your off-season a lot if you're, you know, doing the Olympia in September and then the March and blah, blah, blah. You know the deal, so. Um, when they announced that it was two weeks before, I was like, well, shit, I'm doing this, you know, like it's a good opportunity to get some momentum into the Olympia. It's a good opportunity to win some more money right before the Olympia. I mean, it just made sense. And there was never the thought in my mind of like, oh, maybe, I, you know, it'll be taken away from my Olympia because I know I can continue to be better in close proximity shows. You know, I know I can be at 100 um, percent at the Arnold and then I can be my new 100 percent, which is 2 percent better two weeks later. You know, so I'm not worried about it detracting one from the other. I feel healthy. I feel fresh. Uh, my body's still responding very well to everything exactly as we would predict. So um, it's not at the point yet where I'm like, I've been dieting so long or pushing it that I'm like getting negative feedback of any sort. So, um, you know, we feel extremely confident going into this Arnold and, and you know, into the Olympia as well. I mean, as you should, this is, this is a good year for you, dude. This is a really, this is a yeah. year you, you've leveled up in a big way. I mean, I don't want to keep coming back to Steve, but that was, you know, that's somebody who's been at a certain level for a while and mm -hmm. to, to beat him. And it's not like he was off. He wasn't off at all. That was no. very close to the best Steve I think I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's funny how some, I guarantee you some of the guys that didn't do the Arnold, they were scared that they wouldn't be able to peak two weeks later for the Olympia, which, you know, look at And if you're someone that knows that that doesn't work well for you, uh, maybe it wouldn't be the best option, but maybe you should look at why I can I not peak well two shows in a row. And it's maybe because of what we just talked about with diuretics and peaking protocols. And, you know, I know a lot of these guys like, you know, Steve and myself and, 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 you know, guys like Hunter are doing very, very minimally intrusive peaks, you know? Um, so, you know, doing two shows, three shows in a row is not overly difficult. So, um, you know, it's, it's going to be fun. I expect Steve to be a whole lot better at the Arnold than he was at Texas. Cause obviously I know, he wants an Olympia qualification. He wants redemption from losing to me. I mean, there's a lot of things that are going to be there. So I'm expecting to see a really good Steve Kuklo and a lot of good other guys. So it's, it's going to be a really, really fun show for sure. Yeah. Because, you know, I'll be talking to Steve later today, but that was his, he put all his eggs in one basket almost, you know, luckily there yeah. was the Arnold, but Texas, he was really counting on that win to get him to the Olympia. And then, you know, especially you, you had just won the other show. So I don't think mm -hmm. anybody, Actually, you already at that night you already said you're going to Texas. So I don't think it was like a big shock or anything. But I had said it weeks prior. So I mean people should have known. But <laughs> look, I mean, if, if I was Steve, I would have been hundred percent confident that I could win that show too, as he should be. You know, yeah. that Steve is a top-tier bodybuilder. You know, he's been at the Olympics, compete with the best guys in the world. He obviously knew he was looking good. Um, you know, it was just unfortunate for him. I was, you know, already in shape from one show. I got a little better and I just came in really, 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 really sharp. Um and I was, you know, lucky enough to capture that win. So it's, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see him come back to the Arnold um, better, um, you know, and I think it'll be a fun battle. And I think that's a fun storyline going into the show that, you know, between Steve and I, and I mean, there's, you know, guys like Akeem that beat me by one spot last year. And I mean, you know, you have uh, Nick Walker and his big, you know, kind of debut at a show like this. So, yeah. you know, there's a lot of really good, fun storylines that I think are going to make the show really exciting to watch. And, you know, even though you don't have a ton of like, other than Bonac, you know, top five Olympia names, I can't think of a better, more fun, more exciting, more competitive lineup than we're seeing this year. So uh, I expect there to be a huge, you know, a huge draw to this for people wanting to watch the show. It's really exciting. Just going down the line, just to mention a couple other people, because this is a great show. This oh, is you one got of the best Sergio. Arnold I mean, it's crazy. Sergio Jr. is in this. Hassan, if he tightens up a little bit. Justin Rodriguez is really good. Nick Walker, of course, his fans are going crazy right now for him. Roly yeah. Wink and even Roly, because Roly. Roly. Well, it looked terrible in Chicago, but man, he pulled it together. What was it, like two weeks later in Spain? Wasn't I mean, yeah, long. two weeks. And now he's had another like six to eight. So, I mean, yeah. you know, we got to expect to see a considerably improved Roly. Um, you know, I mean, there's a lot, there's so many good. Ex the thing is here, it's, 
it's an impossible show to predict, you know, like you can give a paper favorite of like a William Bonac, but then after that, it's like, it's a, it comes down to who's good on what day and who looks, you know, cause a good Ian is ke- capable of beating everyone that show, but a good Steve Kuklo is capable of beating everyone that show. A good Akeem is capable of beating everyone that show, you know, maybe a good Nick or a good, a good Sergio capable of beating everyone that show. So, um, you know, it makes it so exciting. I mean, like, even for me, I'm just excited as a fan to like be part of the show and see how these guys look and compete with these guys. And, you know, and, and have my chance to, you know, obviously guys like Kuklo who I beat, I want to separate that distance even further. I want to beat him for a second time and make sure that that's done and behind me, you know, um, you know, and I want to, you know, get this and grab this opportunity for as much momentum going into the Olympia as possible. So you know, there's going to be a lot of guys fighting for a lot of pride and it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, it's you know, people say, who's your pick for the Arnold? Like, come on, dude. Come on. <laughs> there's like six, seven guys here that could win the show. Yeah. You're one of them. Yeah, you know, I'll say Ian's a favorite, Kuklo's a favorite, Akeem's a favorite, Bonnet, Sergio, any of these sure. guys on any given day, and that is what yeah. makes it say. If if it was a case where there's anyone in that list that was just all they got to do is show up at like 80 percent or better, and they and they win, that would be so boring, so boring. No. Yeah, I mean, if if you threw Rami or into the mix or something like that, or like a you know 2015 Phil Heath, then it wouldn't be as exciting because it's like okay, we know who's going to win the show, and then this is who might be second, but it's like. Any of these guys, I mean, because what me, Bonak, and uh, Akeem were all kind of like one spot apart basically at the Olympia last year, right? We were five, yeah. six, seven. Yeah. Um, you know, so you have the top guys there. I mean, and Hunter um, will be at the Olympia, who is right behind us. I mean, you know, you have a lot of really good stories, so it's going to be fun. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, I know that they're never going to do it again. They're going to put the Arnold back in March, but I kind of like it this way. It's me like too. You have the second biggest show, and that builds up momentum for certain people and then two weeks later is the biggest show what i think they should do is have the olympia stay where it is and then move the arnold two or three weeks after the olympia uh, after interesting yeah and have it like a old school shrew classic you know like big purse after the olympia you get the big name guys that'll come after because you know if it's another big purse right after the olympia you'll get the Rammies and the brandons and the hotties coming out to shows like that because it's after the olympia not before uh, true, um true. you know i think and you're talking about big titles big purses close proximity to the Olympia. I think you could make it, you know, a extremely exciting, basically secondary Olympia every year. If you put it two weeks right after the Olympia, you know, yeah, if it's in Columbus versus, you know, Vegas or Florida, it's close, it's accessible. Um, you know, and then a lot of guys will be inclined to do it because they're already in shape and you get a lot of guys coming from the Olympia because they're already in shape. Right. So it'd be really fun. Well, Lauren, Bob Larmer, I don't know if you're listening, but, uh, <laughs> That's not a, that's not a horrible idea, Bob. You might want to think about that. Yeah. So Olympia back in September and then first week of October, you put the Arnold. Perfect. Okay. okay let's do that. So, <laughs> and we, and I think we can all agree that Columbus in October is a lot better than Columbus in March. Well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, nobody wants to go to Columbus in fucking March. Okay. Well, you know, you and I both live in cold places, so we know. Yeah. We'd we know, and I still, I'm, I'm enjoying Florida weather. I don't want to go back to that shit, okay? I want to stay in this nice weather, so. Speaking of that, would you think about moving there? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's something, obviously, we've had the discussion about, you know, and I mean, being here in Florida with, you know, everything I have at my disposal, you know, from having Raw and Revive here and Chris being here, um, you know, and even from just the real estate prices compared to Canada are very fucking enticing, you know? So, hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's something we've, you know, talked about, uh, but, you know, it's, we'll let this season finish off and kind of, you know, things kind of settle down and then we'll kind of decide from there. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, I've been really enjoying being here and, you know, it's kind of breathed some fresh, you know, fresh new life into me. You know, when you do the same a prep in the same atmosphere every day, all the time, you know, and like, and then I would have finished Texas and gone home back to the same thing. It's kind of nice. Like when you're prepping for so long to just be in a new environment with, you know, new excitement and a new gym with new people, um, you know, obviously I miss like my training partner, Mark is back in Canada and I miss, you know, having people like that, but, um, you know, the environment is new and it's fresh and it, it kind of reinvigorated me instead of like going home to like the same monotony, you know? Yeah. And I, I don't want to get the pandemic, uh, people all freaked out here and start arguing, but isn't, can isn't Ontario still closed down in a lot of ways? Uh, we're pretty much back open, but we have the vaccine passport now. So um, you need to be double vaccinated to do, go to the gym, go to the movie theater, go to the supermarket. Like, so, you know, that's in instilled in Ontario now. So um, if I was going home, it would be a pain in the ass for me anyways. <laughs> so it's just a lot easier being in Florida right now. I'll tell you that. Well, Florida is like the most uh, it's, we, we, we have a saying here, Florida, not like the rest of us. It's yeah. almost like a different country from the rest of the USA. That's great. 
Yeah. No, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. And I'm, I'm not quite used to the hundred degrees and humidity every day, but I'm getting better at it. What about the flying giant cockroaches? Have you seen those yet? I've seen some pretty crazy bugs. Yeah. At night you accidentally leave the door open for one second and you're like chasing these things down with a fucking broom to try and kill them, you know, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's good. I mean, it's fun. Yeah. So we talked about post Olympia shows. You, it seems like you plan things pretty well in advance. Are you done at the Olympia no matter what happens or would you consider something right after? <laughs> That's funny you ask that. Yeah, I mean, I'm considering it for sure. Uh, Melissa will be doing the uh, Hurricane Pro in St. Petersburg, Florida, uh, October 23rd. So she'll be doing that. That's like, what, two weeks after the Olympia? So she'll be there. Yeah. And then I guess we'll already be in Tampa over there for that. So we, we've thought about, you know, d- depending on the logistics, going straight from there and flying over and doing Prague, Romania, um, and Spain, because they're all kind of three weeks right in a row. I think you have like, first week of November, second week of November, and then like fourth week, like two weeks after. So three shows within four weeks um, in the European countries. So it's an idea I'm toying with. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, I'll set up all so I know what the logistics of it would be in terms of travel and make sure it's all like ready to go. Uh, we'll finish the Arnold and the Olympia. And then if I, you know, still am keen on that, then I'll, I'll pull the trigger and, and book all that up. But um, but these first to for sure. And then Melissa, 100% will be doing the Hurricane Pro. Um, and then we'll decide from there because also Romania, the second show in the European tour there has figure as well. So oh. it'll be another opportunity for her to get on stage. Um, and Melissa's only really been to Europe once when I did the show in Portugal. So, you know, just from a see in the world vacation kind of standpoint and getting out of you know Canada in the US might be something fun. So uh, definitely something we have looked at, but um, not anything set in stone by any means yet. Okay. Well, I know Prague, I've never been to Prague or Romania, but Prague is all those beautiful old cathedrals. And crazy- yeah. Looks good. Blade Two Trinity, I believe, was filmed. Uh, yeah, Blade Two. Yeah. yeah, that's how I know Prague. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I think one of the Vin Diesel Triple X wasn't that Prague too. But uh, yeah, the yeah the second one, yeah, second yeah. one. And uh, Romania, you could go to Dracula's castle. It's yeah, it's like an yeah. hour away. Right? Yeah, yeah, we're getting way ahead of ourselves. I know. Lots, lots of fun stuff to see. So it's definitely you know in the talks, and you know Patrick and I have talked about it, and um, you know obviously you got to weigh the pros and the cons of. I mean, look, I'll be completely honest. If I you know, place top five at the Olympia, it'll probably be a lot lower on my priority list to go get on stage again because I'm requalified. Look, I like to compete and I want to do more shows. Even if I'm requalified, I will stu- still do other shows in 2022. Even if it's not needed, I want to be on stage. I want to win titles. I want to win Toronto Pro still at one point. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so there's still things I want to do, but it might change my level of interest in traveling around doing shows in in, in Europe if I'm already qualified and put $150,000 in my bank account, you know? Right. But you know, I, I admire the fact that you're, you harken back to those old, the old school guys, like in the nineties, they didn't just yeah. do one show to qualify for the Olympia and then disappear for the rest yeah. of the year. You know, I've talked to guys like Kevin Flex and they Cormier and they say, well, we're, that was our job. We were professional bodybuilders. 100%. We wanted to compete as much as we could and yeah. win, win as many shows, win as much money. That, that was, that was our job. Why wouldn't we? So it, well, I mean, and I look, I look at it this too, like, you know, when I retire, you know, this is going to be one of the big things I have is those accolades and that, you know, that imprint I leave in bodybuilding, you know, and if I leave with 25 pro show wins, you know, I'm in a very rare community of people where so I live, leave with, you know, if I win two and then place top five at the Olympia every year and just keep doing the Olympia every year, you know, my resume looks a lot different when I retire. And, you know, I enjoy, I'm at the point in my career now where I'm young, I'm healthy, I'm enjoying competing. Um, you know, I'm enjoying traveling. I'm enjoying spending the time with Melissa and just getting to see places. Um, so there's absolutely no reason for me not to do it, you know, as long as I feel it's not detracting from the long-term vision of all this, um, you know, I want to be on stage as many times as I can. I want to win as many shows. I want to win as many purses. I want to, I want every title under my belt I can possibly get. Right. Yeah. I love it. So typically when guys do that, they do that disappearing act and sometimes they're gone for a year, two years. It's because, you know, they feel like I need more overall size. I need more legs. I need more this, that. You know, how close do you feel your physique is to the point where you don't need to take these huge chunks of time to just try to build, build, build anymore? I don't think I need that at all anymore. Like, I think there's obviously things that I need to continue to improve on. Um, but I've proven, you know, by competing at the Olympia last year and then going into doing shows, you know, at the beginning of the season this year with Tampa, I can still make significant improvements in a six month, four month off season. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I'm not, I don't think I'm at the point where I need to take like, 18 month off seasons to put on eight pounds of muscle or, you know, it just completely transform my physique. I think even in contest prep, I'm improving at a good rate. And I think, you know, all the size is there. It's just 
fine tuning. Like it's just continuing to build on my chest and making sure that when I'm peaked, you know, a hundred percent that there's still fullness there. Um, a lot of things are just posing things to make sure my back shots are open properly. Um, you know, improve my calves because everyone likes to fucking harp on me for my calves. Which aren't even that fucking bad. Okay. They're just like, not, the I, best. I don't get this. Like, there are so many guys in the pro league right now with, sticks for calves and i never hear a peep about it from and anybody. i and i i get it left right and center and if you look at some of my shots i have you like actually zoom in they're actually like okay it's just like yeah, they're not you they're know not just, horrible they're just not no it's not you know. i don't have steve kuklo's calves but like i there's a lot worse calves out there but i mean look the fact that that's all that i'm getting harped on now when a year ago would have been my chest and two years ago would have been my back and three years ago would have been my legs the fact that we're just down to fucking calves now it's like great fucking say they suck i'll take it you know that's good. If you got nothing, if you got nothing but to rip on me for my calves, I mean, shit, you know, it's, we're doing all right. I've, I've never seen a contest ever in my life. And I've been probably a thousand contests. I've never seen a show come down to calves ever. No, so no. I mean, Ben Pakulski <laughs> wasn't winning every show because he had the best calves, right? It's like Mike Matarazzo never won a pro show. Late Mike Eric Fankhauser, you know I mean? Like there's tons of guys with crazy calves that look, they look awesome and they add to a physique, but they're not the end all be all, you know, it's and, not, you know, I, I hate to, it's like it's, having forearms. It's like having the biggest forearms. It's like, yeah, it looks good. But as long as like the whole physique flows, right. Um, and it fits right. And it's not detracting from the overall image of the physique. Yeah. It's not that pertinent. And like, I still train my calves three or four days a week. I'm trying everything I can to improve them. Um, you know, it's not out of laziness or anything. You know, I have some injuries in them that make them a little worse, but you know, it's, I'm just trying to make them fit and I'm not so stressed about it as much as I think the internet is, you know? No. Well, people need to find something, something. This yeah, that's won. okay. I'll take it. I'll I mean, take it. You know, know, once, once, once people stop talking, like I said about my chest and my back and start going on in the calves, I'm like, we're making fucking progress here. You know, <laughs> well, this is, this is how, you know, you're, you've arrived is they're talking about you so much. Yeah. Two, three years ago, you didn't hear too much about Ian Valier. Trust me. Like, no, hey. People didn't give, two, people didn't give two shits to rip on my damn calves. That's for sure. You know? So, so yeah, if they're working that hard to really look for something to, to insult, yeah, you, 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 you've succeeded. You're on your, you're well on your way to where you want to be. <laughs> yep. Man. So uh, I've taken up enough of your time and prep. I'm probably going to bother you at the show. So I'll, let's it's all go good, on. man. Yeah. So uh, Ian Valier guys, you're going to see him on stage two more times this year, at least on a classic in Columbus. That is uh September We're on 25th. stage for Saturday, right? Yeah. 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 It's a, everything's on a Saturday. Yeah, yeah. And you don't have to sit through. I'm going to get so many people mad. You're not going to have to sit through 11 divisions. There's only four divisions <laughs> on this year. I love all the divisions. They're all Thank awesome. Thank God. I, yeah. I mean, <laughs> selfishly, I love it when there's only four divisions. Yeah. And it was it? Indy, Indy Pro had two pro divisions. Oof, yeah. Love. God, I was like in heaven. That but, was uh, quick. Yeah. It was open in 212. I'm like, yes. Anyway, so you'll see him there. Could be, could be another win for Ian. We don't know. It's going to be a hell of a show, but I think. Watch and gotta, find out. You've got as good a chance as anybody, man. And then the Olympia, seventh place last year. I don't see you going backwards. I see you going no, forward. we're going up. Up the we're ladder. Up. Yep. It's a hell of a year, and it ain't over yet. So uh, follow him on Instagram. What is it? At? Is it just your name? Yeah, I-A-I-N-V-A-L-L-I-E-R-E. Yep. Yeah, if you guys can figure out how to spell that unique variation of Ian, <laughs> Scottish variation, I think we figured out at one point. Yeah, Gaelic, yeah. Gaelic, yeah, there you go. So check him out, guys. And that's it. I wish you the best, Ian. I can't wait to see you Thank again. You. And very, very, it's very interesting watching you this year. You're, I love seeing people level up. You know, I, yeah, I always thought fun. you were, I never, I never saw you as one of these top guys. I said, maybe he will be, maybe, but now, you know, you took all the doubt away. You're, you're up there. So thank you. I appreciate that. And it's not over yet. You're still climbing. You're still on that yeah. rise. So cool. We're still going. Yeah. So thank you so much for taking the time, Ian. Appreciate yes. it. We'll see you in Columbus. And everybody, thanks for watching Ron Line Report with this man, Ian Valier. We'll see you next time.